Hey guys, today's fun is over mitosis versus meiosis. It's pronounced meiosis, like that is a long I instead of a E. Sometimes you will hear people say meiosis, but that's okay too. We'll take either way, but it's really pronounced meiosis. These two SPIs that this covers is going to be, um, the first one's going to be 1.8, construct an explanation demonstrating that the function of mitosis for multicellular organisms is for growth and repair through the production of genetically identical daughter cells. So basically the reason cells go through mitosis are to heal and, and grow things. Um, and then the other SPI that this is covering is 3.2, distinguishing between mitosis and meiosis and compare the resulting daughter cells. So seeing what's the finished product. So here we go. So first on your paper, terms you need to know are going to be mitosis. Mitosis is the process that forms two new cells with two new nuclei. Nuclei is just how you say nucleus, but in the plural form. So, nuclei. It occurs in all, capitalize it, underline it, highlight it, circle it, star it, anything you need to. All of our cells, except our sex cells. Um, a term I heard recently when I was reviewing this information was calling that our body cells. So, every part of our body has cells, and so all of those body cells are where mitosis would occur. Um, another way I have heard to have people remember it is people will say mitosis occurs in my toes for the toesis part, toes, and it makes you think that it occurs everywhere. Anyways, the end result of mitosis is two genetically identical daughter cells that means that they are exactly the same that their genetic material is exactly alike that at the end of mitosis it results in two new cells that both have 46 total chromosomes for at least human processes other organisms have different numbers of total chromosomes but for us, it would be 46 chromosomes. Um, so a daughter cell, that was in part of the definition that on mitosis. What's a daughter cell? Well, a daughter cell, or daughter cells, are the two new genetically identical cells that are formed at the end. Um, and when we talk about meiosis, we'll talk about daughter cells also. Those are also daughter cells. It doesn't just have to be the new cells for mitosis, it's the new cells for meiosis also. So it's any time the new cells are made. Oh, look at that. Really, any new cells are called daughter cells. Forgot I wrote that. Um, our next term is homologous chromosomes. You've heard this before um, by now, and so this should just be a review. But this is a sort of an easier way to remember it, I think. Homologous chromosomes, oh, let's talk about the word homologous first. We've talked about that before. The prefix, homo equals same, and the ologous part is order. So this is talking about the order of the genes, basically. So homologous chromosomes are chromosomes that are the same type of gene, found in the same location, and are the same size. And really, it should be about the same size because they're not always exactly to the millimeter the same size, but when you look at them, they're in the, the right neighborhood of the same size. Our next term is cytokinesis. So let's define, or let's before we define this word, let's talk about the word. So cyto equals cell, and so we have over here, cytoplasm. Well, if cyto equals cell, then that's cell plasm. You know what cytoplasm is, right? It's the jello-like goo that holds everything together in a cell. 
So that's why it's called that, because it's the cell's plasm. So back to cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is the last stage of mitosis when the two new daughter cells are formed. Cytokinesis literally means division of the cytoplasm. Okay, so that's where we're getting that. Okay, a cell plate. Now we're going to talk about some of the physical characteristics you would be able to see during mitosis. Um, and the cell plate is one of them. But cell plates only appear in plant cells. Um, and they at first begin to appear as a dotted line before turning into a solid wall that becomes the cell wall. So if you look at this picture here, that dotted line is the cell plate growing. And eventually, that cell plate will connect and make a solid line, and that solid line will turn into the cell wall, and then you will have two new cells. Um, next, we have cleavage furrow. Cleavage furrow is also part of a way to identify a cell. And in this version, it would be an animal cell. So cleavage furrow appears only in animal cells. And right before cytokinesis, the cell pinches in. And what I mean by that is this right there. Um, in preparation for this division of cytoplasm. Remember, cytokinesis means the division of cytoplasm, right? So this cytoplasm is going to divide. Well, it's going to divide when the cell pinches in and pulls the two cells apart. So two new cells form when that divides completely. All right, some more technical words here. Haploid. Haploid is a single set of unpaired chromosomes, which means that you're not getting the one from the mom and the dad, you're just getting the one from the mom, or the one from the dad, whichever, because it's one parent. So this is showing you this is just one chromosome, two chromosomes, three chromosomes. Those are all single different chromosomes. They are not the same. Whereas in diploid, you're getting two complete sets of chromosomes. One set from each parent. So I number these two. One, two, three. Showing you that these two right here are one set. These two right here are one set. This is the mom's. This is the dad's. Let me change my font color here. The dads. This is the mom's. It's not writing. There it is. This is the mom's. Mm. Well, actually, that was the dads. This is the mom's. This is the dads. So each one of those is from one parent. So it's a set. All right. Meiosis is the process. Oh, see that time I said meiosis instead of meiosis. Meiosis is the process that forms four new daughter cells. Meiosis only occurs in our sex cells. And remember, sex cells are sperm and eggs. Sex cells are also called gametes, and sex cells, well, this should be going this way, sex cells are also known as gametes, sex cells are also the same thing as sperm and eggs. Those are all the same terms. You can use them interchangeably. They all mean the same thing. Um, another thing I've heard, I told you about mitosis occurs in your toes. Another way I've heard to remember it is my osis happens in your O baby because that's how you get babies. Um, so if that helps you remember, then hopefully it will. All right, moving on. End result of 
meiosis is four haploid daughter cells that are not super underline, bold, highlight, crazy, big print. Not, 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 not genetically identical to the parent cells. This is how we're different. You're not identical to your parents. You have some of each of their genes in you because of variation, and that's what we want. Um, so, end result of meiosis, meiosis is four haploid daughter cells that are not, 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 not genetically identical to the parent cells. They have half the number of chromosomes, 23. So you get, in those four new cells, just 23. We talked about this the other day. Once those cells join together, it gives you your 46. But that's not until fertilization occurs. All right. Oh, I added a little note there. Having the 23, the half, of each parent is what gives us our variations and our differences. We don't want to be clones. We all want our unique individualism-ness. I can't talk. I don't know if that's a word. I think I made it up. Um, we want to be individuals. You don't want to look just like your sister or just like your brother. You want to be unique and an and, and individual. And that's how we become individuals is by this half thing of our chromosomes. Alright, so on the bottom of your page you have room. I want you to draw this and write this. So you have enough room, I think, if you were just to draw this box with that information. Draw this um, and this. Draw that real fast. Put this information down. So on the left hand side, you're going to write mitosis, and you're going to write that that's asexual. This is just a little bit of a summary review of all of our information. And, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. Um, mitosis occurs in all body cells. It starts with 46. Oh, there's the start. It actually starts with 46, and it ends with 46. And you get two new genetically identical daughter cells. So that's everything you need to know about what happens in mitosis. Oh, I forgot. You know what I forgot? That it's one parent. So mitosis is a type of asexual reproduction. It requires one parent. You start with 46. You end with 46. And you end with two new genetically identical daughter cells. Now we're going to move on to meiosis. Meiosis is a type of sexual reproduction. It requires two parents. You start with 46. You end with 23. Four new different daughter cells. Okay, different, different, different. Remember, we want variation here. So that's what you need to draw and write in that big opening on the bottom of your page. The next picture I'm about to show you, you don't need to write, but I want to explain it to you just so you have an idea about this process. So mitosis is this process right here. And how mitosis works is you, the cell goes through these stages. Interphase is the first stage. And it's the majority of the time of the cell's life stays in interphase. During this phase, DNA is replicated and gets prepared for the future stages. Then you come to prophase. And it's during this phase that the centrioles reappear. Remember? Well, I guess they reappear in interphase. They start to show up in interphase and then they're there for prophase. Remember we learned about centrioles when we talked about cell organelles? And we said centrioles were only there for cell division or mitosis. Well, guess what? That's this part right here. So those show up and they move to the poles and the nucleus starts to dissolve. Then you go to metaphase. In metaphase, the chromatids line up in the middle. Then you have anaphase and it pulls them apart. And then those go to opposite ends of the poles 
where we have the pinching in on this cell occurring, which if you remember is cleavage furrow. And at the very end, you have two new daughter cells. Two new daughter cells. And for a bonus point, right on there, if those are... Oh, I can't give that. There's a bonus point. It's right there. Look at that diploid. I was going to ask you if it was a diploid or a haploid, but it's already there. Sorry. All right. That's mitosis. Then meiosis... The first part of meiosis is exactly like mitosis. The same things are occurring. Look, it has interphase. That's when your DNA replicates. Then it goes to prophase. And the centrioles are appearing. And the nucleus is disappearing. Then we're going to go to metaphase. And they're going to line up in the middle, those chromatids. Then you're going to go to anaphase. And they're going to pull apart. And then you're going to have telophase, which is where it starts to divide in two. But only here, when you get to cytokinesis, the two new cells, it starts the cycle again. So here's your two new cells, but only now it's going to start the cycle again. And at this phase, it doesn't go through interphase again. It just skips and goes straight to the what's next. So it goes prophase, and then metaphase. It lines up in the middle. Anaphase, it pulls them apart. And then you have your cytokinesis. Oh, you have your um, cleavage furrow, and then you have four different daughter cells. So at the end of meiosis, four different daughter cells, okay? So I just wanted you to see that's what it looks like. So if you ever saw pictures of this, that you would have some idea of what these illustrations are. If there's only um, six stages, it's mitosis. If it looks like it's there twice, it's meiosis. All right, that's all.